Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome back. In today's video, I am going to be showing this card that I created using the floral vase. I'm using the stamp, die, and layering stencil and I really love how these images layer up together. Here's a look at the stamp set and also the stencil and I'm going to be showing you a few features about that stencil later on in the video, but I will be using all three of the images on the stamp set. The reason for it is because these can die cut out and then you can layer these two smaller images onto your main image, which I thought was a really neat feature that I haven't done before with stamps. I placed these onto Nina 80 pound cardstock and I'm going to be stamping them in some sandy beach ink. This is a really light brown. This is from Gina K Designs. The reason for this is because I'm going to be doing some ink blending and sometimes I don't wait long enough for my black ink to dry, which can then smear. So to be on the safe side, I'm stamping these in the sandy beach and this actually works really great if you want to do more of a no line look. So that's a great color choice for that. Now here are a look at the stencils and it's hard to see on camera, but they are labeled at the top of what piece this is going to give you color to on your image. So this first piece I'm laying down, I'm using a make art station just to use the magnets and hold the stencil down over the image. Right now, this is just the vase that I'm going to be coloring up. I'm going to be using sea glass ink from Gina K Designs and I'll be using a blending brush to apply this ink lightly. You can use whatever blending tools that you have. Right now I have my honeybee blending tools designated for oxides. So I'm using a different set of brushes to add the color. So I removed that first layer, I'm bringing in the next layer and this is going to be inking up some of the leaves that go around the image, which also is going to ink up that image that I just pointed to off on the right. So I'm starting out with key lime and I'm actually going to bring in a darker green to add just a hint of shadow to the leaves that are closest to the flowers. So just really light handed, not adding a ton of color with that light green. And then I'm bringing in Christmas pine, which is super dark. So you just want to be really careful. But I thought it was a beautiful kind of contrast to that light green. After I have this main floral image done, I'm going to pick up that stencil and bring it over to that second image here in the top corner. Now you can see this is going to ink up just those bottom leaves. Now you want to be mindful about those open areas off on the side. We don't have stamped images for that. We're just doing these bottom leaves. So you want to be careful not to get ink on those other open areas. And for those, I like to use a bitty blending brush. It's just easier to get into some of those smaller areas. This next layer that I put on, this is the next stencil. This one is using jelly bean green. I just wanted to have some different variations to my green tones. And to also kind of change it up, I'm bringing in Blue Lagoon. This is just a really pretty blue, just kind of gives it a different tone of green and you can see how it changes the stem colors and also just another shadow layer to that jelly bean green. Brought that stencil, same stencil, over to this first image here, this uh, set of flowers, doing the same colors, same thing. The next layer of my stencil I'm bringing in is going to be inking up parts of the flower. For this, I am using a bright pink. This is bubblegum ink, and these are really easy to line up. There are etched lines on these stencils that help you line up what's already underneath there. And it's, it's hard to tell on camera, but in person, these are really easy to line up. Um, after I did the bubble gum, I'm bringing in a little bit of wild lilac with a small blending brush. I loved how those colors came out. Now, I would suggest wiping off your stencil a little better than I did because when I placed this over that image here in the top right corner, I got more purple than I did pink. So if you want to have those pink undertones, I would suggest kind of wiping it a little bit better than I did. Now here, I'm also trying to be really mindful of those open areas where there are no stamped lines on the side. What's going to happen if you get a lot of ink on the edges is when you die cut this out, you're going to see that color. You're not going to get those really nice white crisp lines. So just something to be aware of. This stencil piece, same one, I also moved down to this bottom image here, which is just a smaller cluster of flowers. The next layer to this stencil is adding 
the other pieces of the flower. Now I decided to keep these all the same color, but you could change these colors up if you really wanted to have kind of some contrast or more of a shadow look to them. So totally up to you, but I really like the color combination that I had here, starting with that bubblegum pink and then adding in that wild lilac. Then I will also shift this stencil over and add this to my two other images that I have here. Now I technically didn't need to, to ink up quite the whole thing of the vase because I did plan on layering these images on top, but I wanted you to see how it would look. And honestly, I kind of wish I would have left it because I really liked this no line look, but I'll explain more about that in just a minute when I get to the stamping piece again. So here I'm just finishing off that final image down towards the bottom and then I can bring in the last piece of the stencil which is going to be adding the inside of the flowers and kind of some of those decorative pieces that go around it. I will be using dandelion ink for this, just a nice yellow and then also bringing in a hint of sweet mango which is an orange just to kind of give that a little more color and dimension. Now, one thing I realized I forgot to tell you earlier was that when I did my stamping, I left my stamp where it was in my Misty tool. I didn't clean it, I didn't move it. I'm going to be stamping again, or I had planned to. So I apologize, I forgot to mention that earlier. Now you could see here, I kind of got a little smart and I'm bringing in some just post-it notes to kind of mask off those open areas. After I finish this last image here, you're gonna be able to see the whole thing completely and like I said this actually is a really pretty no line look but my whole intention was to re-stamp this in the black ink and I like I said I honestly kind of wish I would have left it because I think by stamping this in the black ink I lost some of that color that I added when I did like the pink and the purple I kind of lost that a little bit still love how this came out but just something to note so here I stamped it in the honeybee stamps intense black ink and I'm gonna stamp it twice, trying to get a good impression. I needed to push down more in the centers of the flowers to get really get those details. Now that I have that all stamped out, I'm going to take the coordinating dies, line up each of the images, hold it down with a low tack tape, and then run this through my die cut machine. After I have these die cut out, I am going to layer up my separate images of the flowers. So there's my image with the vase, then I added thin foam squares, to this first image, I wanted to pop it up and have dimension, but not too much dimension. So I'm using the thin foam squares. And you can see where this is gonna line up perfectly over that center bunch of flowers in the vase. I just thought this was really super cool. I love this look and just kind of the style. And I did the same thing with that smaller bunch of flowers. So like I said, I probably didn't need to ink blend in the center of the vase, but it's kind of always nice to do just in case you didn't want to die cut and add dimension to the center of those flowers. To add just a bit of a background to my vase, I am taking the Circle Spotlight stencil from Honey Bee Stamps. This is the largest out of that pack. And I'm putting it off on the side, kind of hanging off the edge of my cardstock here. This is a piece of white cardstock, four and a quarter by five and a half. And this is the 80 pound cardstock because that's what I like to use for ink blending. I'm starting with the wild dandelion and I'm starting in the bottom corner on the left because that's where my image is going to go, working my way up to the other side, getting lighter as I get towards that edge. And then I'm gonna come in with that sweet mango and just kind of darken up that corner just a little bit. I did complete the whole circle, but it just fades off as we get towards the top right. I'll kind of bring in my image just to see how far up I want that uh, kind of darker area to go. And I can extend that just a little bit, really light handed. So I'm gonna set this off on the side and I'm gonna just stamp out my sentiment really quick. And I am using the Get Well Soon stamp set. I prepped my stamp with my hand just to kind of remove any residue that might be on there from manufacturing and it gives me a better stamped impression and I'm just using the intense black ink from honeybee stamps I will also use the coordinating die to cut this out and then I'm also going to cut out about three more layers from just white cardstock I could not resist adding splatters to my background but it looks great clean and simple but I'm going to use some perfect pearls that I mixed with some water and just splattering that over my background I needed some sort of shimmer to my background 
I later on trimmed this panel down to four by five and a quarter and added it to a piece of fog cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half. Since my vase already has dimension to it, I'm just adding it off on the side there with a tape runner. And then I'm layered together my sentiment. So this is about where it's gonna go. I just wanted to kind of eyeball it, make sure everything fit before really pushing it down. And then I'm attaching these additional layers that I cut from white cardstock with my tape runner. You could also use liquid glue, but this gives me uh, a little bit more dimension to my sentiment and I don't have to cut up foam squares into these tiny pieces, but I love how the coordinating dies for the sentiments really get in close to the words. And then I'm just going to flip this over and trim off any of that excess that may be hanging off the side and that's going to finish my card. So this is something that you could use your stencil for. You could just color it up with your favorite coloring medium. But I really love how you can add dimension to that by die cutting out those additional images. All of the supplies used today will be linked down below in the video description. Thanks so much.